for joining Morningstar today. Bible study is now underway. Good evening. I'm Minister Curtis Williams, one of the sons of Morningstar Missionary Baptist Church here in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I am here to study with you on the concern of keeping the Sabbath day holy. This course of study, Sabbath as Resistance, which was written by Walter Brueggemann, is centered on creating in us a closer, truer, and more accurate understanding of what it means to keep the Sabbath day holy. Over the next 13 weeks, I and others, uh, others of the sons and daughters of Morningstar will be going through this course of study to help you understand and consider the importance of Sabbath day. It may help you to understand some things that you'd never considered before, but it also may be a confirming message, a confirming lesson of your of understanding that you already had, that God has already touched your heart for concerning the Sabbath. And that's what our goal is here with this lesson over the next 13 weeks. This course of study centers around the Ten Commandments and more specifically the Fourth Commandment, again, keep the Sabbath day holy. The author, Walter Brueggemann, notes that the Fourth Commandment looks back to the first three commandments and the God who rests, which is Exodus 20 verses 3 through 7, and at the same time looks forward to the last six commandments that concern neighbor. And those are verses 12 through 17. For certain, we'll examine these scriptures in order to gain a stronger biblical understanding of Sabbath. Now, what I want to do with you at the outset is to frame this perspective in the creation narrative from which the fourth commandment gets its substance and its foundation. Now, I'm going to provide you a summary of the creative story, the creation story that you may consider to be really short. However, I guarantee when you read the scriptures for yourself, and those scriptures are Genesis 1, Genesis 2, 1 through 3, you will be able to see that my summary is on point. So here we go. In the six days that God created the heavens and the earth and all the living creatures therein, including man on the sixth day. He did so in order to have an environment within which he would develop a relationship with man. This creation was good and God said it was good. God provided man everything he needed to be with God. And that's very important when we're talking about the Sabbath, that you understand it is to be with God. God gave man two responsibilities, to procreate and rule over every other living creature. Man's food was provided by God. And because God, what all that God created was good, man did not need clothing. Now on the seventh day, God rested from the work of creating all that he had done. Understand for everyone from the little one to the, uh, to the eldest who may not know this story, God was not tired when he was laying out. He was not tired. He was laying out a pattern or a rhythm for life. It is necessary for us to rest. And it is most important for us to rest with God. Here is where we must begin to flesh out an understanding of the meaning and God's intent of the Sabbath. It was not until man's disobedience that he lost his understanding of what it meant to be with God and to rest in God. Man lost this understanding due to the consequence of his sin in that the earth was broken from its created state and man then had to toil in the earth to produce his sustenance. So this is the framework from which we will study together in order to bring about the renewal 
and proper understanding of the Sabbath. And Sabbath as resistance to perpetuating the unrelenting and unsustainable drive of man to produce more than he can physically manage, mentally manage, spiritually manage, and economically manage. The Ten Commandments were given by God to the people of Israel upon their exodus from Egypt. God had heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt for the strain, for the stress, for the work that had been put upon their backs and their lives to sustain Egypt and to keep Egypt in the status that it was in as being a powerful nation and a prosperous nation. Egypt was the center. Egypt had everyone coming to them and because Egypt was also conquering those around it. But Egypt's socioeconomic system was built upon the worship of gods who demanded more and more grain, which required more buildings within which to store the grain, which further required more bricks to build the buildings to store the grain in. This insatiable productivity was an unending burden on the backs of the Israelites. The plight and cries of the Israelites was heard by God. In this light, we see God as, a, as an emancipatory God, who in creating the world, instituted rest as a requirement in having a relationship with him. I wanna go back just a little bit to emphasize that for you. Think about it, at creation, six days, he created the world, everything that there is, and man. And the seventh day, he rested. He created an environment to be with man, to have relationship with man. So if he, in instituting this, he said, I want you to take a rest from only the two things that I asked you to do, to procreate and to rule over the, all the other creation that I made. Those two things, everything else, God provided. Food, clothing, shelter, if you want to, because the firmament, all of the environment was fit and it was unbroken for man to sleep in without any clothes, to eat. He had it all. And that is the environment that God created. This is the pattern that he created for us in that we would work, yes, but there must be a time of rest for you and for you to be in relationship with God. Let's think about this. His chosen people were unable to rest in the enslaved conditions set upon them by the Egyptians. So God set in motion to bring them out of Egypt to rest with him. You may ask, how does this apply to us today? Well, let's consider the impact of the system of work in our mental health within the environment of work we operate in today. So I wanna give you some statistics of why it would be necessary for us to rest and to take Sabbath day serious. So statistically, one in five or 43.8 million people experience mental illness in a given year. One in 25 or 10 million people experience a serious mental illness. One in 100 or 2.4 million people live with schizophrenia. 2.6% or 6.1 million people have bipolar disorder. 6.9% or 16 million suffer from severe depression. 18.1% 18, 18 or 42 million live with anxiety disorder. 
90% of those who die from suicide have an underlying mental illness. These are surprising statistics. And it is probable that some of these mental health issues may not be solely caused by excessive work. However, the present day system of overproduction and desire to achieve and gain more and more things is a major factor for the unhealthy stress we are put through day in and day out. Ironically, this demand in the system within which it impacts us has many of us bragging about how many vacation days and sick, sick days we have saved up. This is not a good thing. And this is not what God wants for his creation. We look at the Ten Commandments and it is, we always look at it uh, ten as what we are not to do. The commandments were set to teach a people who did not have a good understanding of how to be together because they were struggling under slavery. They were all related. They, the ancestry of them over 400 years, they were related, but they did not really get to know each other or support each other because of the system of enslavement they were suffering under. So God gives 10 commandments and one of which is keep the Sabbath, Sabbath day holy. The other commandments, all de the first three, the first three dealt with how we are to relate with God. The fourth tells us to rest. The last six tells us how we are to be in relationship with one another. But I want you to understand when you read and study the Ten Commandments that the fourth commandment about the Sabbath is actually the longest commandment. So it was very important to God to make that an emphasis uh, on rest. So what we have here is you need to understand just as much as thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false, false witness, it is just as much a sin to not rest as it is for those others. So please understand the seriousness of this and the necessity and the necessity of understanding why we must keep the Sabbath, Sabbath day holy. And please understand it's not talking about, this is not talking about a particular day. We worship on Sunday, some people worship on Saturday so whatever the day is, depending on your denomination, is that you go and you worship God. That is how you have it set up. But that is not the main thing of Sabbath. Sabbath is taking time to be with God. Saying no sometimes to the things that keep you busy. But that is the thing, to keep the Sabbath day holy, to be with God. So, more on this rat race. So, in the context of rat race, Walter Brueggemann states that all levels of social power, gods, pharaohs, supervisors, taskmasters, slaves, are uniformly caught up in and committed to the grind of endless production. Commodity desire has for the most crowded out the covenantal tradition. And we can see this in ourselves today. We brag about, man, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm trying to make this paper. And we're grinding and we're grinding and we're grinding ourselves into the ground. Some people will say, when is enough enough? You have to ask yourself, when is enough enough? When God, as a child of God, when God has blessed you, whatever that may be, if it's monetarily outstanding, if it's in peace, better. If it's in family, 
man, praise God for that. We have to take pro uh, pride in that. Yes, take pride in that. But the grind every day to say, I got to do this and I can't stop grinding because I got to make this paper. I got to make this money. I have to get this promotion. I have to, I have to, I have to. And there will come a time when if you don't listen to your body, your body will shut you down. And then your rest, it may not be as productive because you are critically hurting. The rest that we're talking about and that we're going to talk about through the course of this lesson is that rest where you have the opportunity, that purposeful opportunity to say no to a lot of things or whatever that one thing is. And you sit down and you rest with God, even if it means you're going to go bicycling for one or two hours, but you shut everything else out. And that is something that you enjoy. And in that time, you're communing with God. You may not even be quoting scripture, but you're thanking him. You're allowing him to speak to your spirit. And that is very, very important. And that is keeping the Sabbath day holy. Let me give you an example from, uh, from the scripture, from the Psalms of what I believe uh, in a song that David wrote was his, uh, was it uh, an interaction or that he had with God in a time of Sabbath. And I'm going to do the whole scripture here. It is Psalm 19. And the ending of it is going to be rather familiar to you all. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit is to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening his eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This was David's reflection in a time of Sabbath, in a time of relationship and time that he took to acknowledge who God was in his creation and in his justice. But he had this time. These are beautiful words of a man that acknowledged God in that time, understanding his place in creation and understanding the lordship of God over him. And he said it himself at the end, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So he was speaking to God. He was communing with God. He was in Sabbath with God to do, to create that song. 
And this is something that you can only do when you spend time with God. The first commandment to the Israelites is thou shalt have no other gods before me. Their enslavement of 400 years combined with the religious influence of Pharaoh's gods resulted in the Israelites not knowing the God of their ancestors. Thus, God's rescue of Israel was bringing them back into knowledge and relationship to himself. According to Brueggemann, the first commandment is a declaration that the God of the Exodus is unlike all the gods the slaves had known heretofore. This God is not to be confused with, is not to be confused with, or thought parallel to the insatiable gods of imperial productivity. This God is subsequently revealed as a God of mercy, steadfast, loving, and faithfulness, who is committed to covenantal relationships of fidelity. So again, let's go back. Let's take a look at what we're going through in this world today. If we look at what we see on television, they, the, the ad is set up and they say, you got to have this and you have to have it now because there's not much of it available. So you got to have it now. And there's not much of this. And this will make you more important by having this. And so we go out and we work hard every day. And sometimes we'll work hard and we'll buy something that is outside of our capability and our ability to sustain, which means when the bill comes, now I need a better job, a higher paying job. I have to work more hours. I don't have time for family. I don't have time to relax. I don't have, but all the time you are teaching your spirit. You are training your spirit into doing something and being in a condition that is not healthy, not for you physically, not for you spiritually. So it is very important to understand, to know how to put the brakes on what you have to have, what you got to have, because it puts you in that rat race of the grind and in a system. Because understand, the majority of what we see some, uh, many times on television, no matter uh, however you, whatever it is, what they're displaying and what people say they have, they really don't have. They really do not have all of that. And if they do, they're part of a small group of people who are wanting you to believe in having it so that they can make more money off of you. See, what's the change up? more bricks to build more buildings for more grain, more money to buy bigger mansions, larger cars. And down here, and I say down here, we are struggling to strive to get that when it is not for us, mainly because if we are doing all that we can in the grind to get more, to have more, you are neglecting God because you are not resting. You are not keeping the Sabbath day holy where he can be with you and you can be with him. With God, they would enter a rhythm of life that allowed them to rest. Without a doubt, this rest should be centered on communing and praying with God. And it should be a time of mental and physical recovery. So what are the benefits of rest? Physical recovery, that's taking a nap or going to sleep. 
And again, I said earlier, if you push your body too far and don't listen to it, it will shut you down. And I'm sure many of you have went down to, to after doing whatever it is and you've been nonstop and you say, you know what, I'm just going to take me a 15 minute nap. And 12 hours later, you wake up. Your body has shut you down. Mental recovery, allowing your brain to slow down or shut off. Sensory recovery, unplug the technology. Creative recovery, enjoying activities that inspire you. And emotional recovery, expression, expressing emotions without having to manage them. Social recovery, getting away from social situations that drain or exhaust you. And finally, spiritual recovery, connecting with God through prayer or, med or meditation. This is just the beginning of this lesson. This is just the first part. I hope that you got something out of this. And I pray that you will tune in next week for the second part. Let us pray. Lord God, I want to thank you for this time. Pray, Lord God, that this message of, of keeping the Sabbath day holy, Lord God, is helpful. I pray, Lord God, that it is inspiring to some to help them to think about it, to help them, Lord God, consider you more, to look at your word. Lord God, please bless this lesson as we continue with this over the next 13 weeks. I pray that you bless the ministers that will continue this lesson, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you bless the listeners, Lord God, that they will take it to heart and that they will apply it in their lives for a stronger and more meaningful relationship with you. I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining Morningstar today. 